Friends, I welcome you to worship today. Once again, our church is gathering together, sharing together this time of worship. It is a reminder to me of the fact that we are in this together as one body of Christ. We may be individual communities of faith, but we are one body of Christ. And so, friends, may you experience the grace, the mercy, and the love, the truth, and the beauty of God as we worship together. God, you speak to us in dreams of promises and blessings that you are with us, present and near. We think to ourselves, the Lord is here, and we did not know it. Let us respond to God's promises and blessings today in joyful worship. May we hear God, see God, and respond to God today and each day. Let us worship God. Scripture today continues the story of Jacob in the book of Genesis. The lectionary skips in different places, and so I want to encourage you to maybe read some of the stories in between and after um, to fill in some of the places that uh, we haven't looked at over these last few weeks. But today we read from Genesis 28, beginning in verse 10, going through the first half of verse 19. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head, and he lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending upon it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth will be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he'd put under his head and set it up for a pillar, and he poured oil on top of it. And he called that place Bethel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Quick question. 
Who dreams when they sleep? Do you ever remember your dreams? I know most of the time I can't remember my dreams, but sometimes when I do, they are really weird or don't make much sense. Well, today's Bible story is about a dream. Jacob is the son of Isaac, and he was traveling on a long journey. He got tired and decided to go to sleep. He found a rock to put under his head, but that doesn't sound very comfortable, does it? Well, while he was sleeping, he had a dream. In the dream, he saw a ladder going from heaven to earth, and angels were going up and down the ladder. That's a pretty cool image, isn't it? In his dream, God was standing next to him, talking to him. God made him three promises. First, he tells him, I will give you the land you are laying on. Then God says, your offspring will be like the dust of the earth and spread abroad. Well, I don't know about you, but my house is full of dust. So Jacob is going to have a big family. Then God tells Jacob, know that I'm with you and will keep you wherever you go. Wow, that's amazing. And you know what is even more amazing? God makes that same promise to us every day. God is always with us and will be with us wherever we may go. When Jacob woke, he knew that God had been there and spoken to him through his dream. Although he was afraid, he said, how awesome is this place? He took the stone which he was using as a pillow and stood it up and named the area Bethel, which means house of God. Then Jacob made a promise to God. If God will be with me and watch over me on my journey and provide me with clothes and food and bring me back home safe, then the Lord will be my God. And the pillar that I have made will be God's house. And all that you give me, I will give you one-tenth in return. Jacob had an amazing experience. I'm sure no one would be able to convince him that his dream wasn't a special message from God just for him. God can speak to us in many ways, through other people, our conscience, and through dreams as well. Of course, we have all had bad or crazy dreams, but I think if God really had something important he needed us to know, he could speak to you in a wonderful dream, and you would know without a doubt that it was a special message just for you from God. Our preacher for this morning is a young woman who is just about to graduate from Princeton Theological Seminary later this year. She has been under care of the Presbytery of Cincinnati in the ordination process for the last several years, and I, as the moderator of that committee, have had the blessing of journeying with Mary over these last several years and seeing how she has grown and how her call has been shaped and transformed. And so as she is now entering into a process of seeking a call, uh, as she comes to the end of her seminary training, um, we are blessed to give her an opportunity to preach and have something that she can share with those churches that she will be talking with. And so I am grateful for the word that Mary has to share, and I pray that it is a blessing to you. Hello, my name is Mary Hayes, and I will get to preach for you guys today. I just want to thank Ed for asking me to preach for you all today, and I just want to let you know that I am very honored uh, to be here with you. Let us now do our biblical text for today. Our text for today is Genesis 28, verses 10 through 19. Listen now for the word of God. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And Jacob dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside Jacob and said, I am the Lord, 
the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised to you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And Jacob was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. And this is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, Beit El, the house of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. These past few months have been a journey, to say the least. With the COVID pandemic, public murders of many Black people, protests, riots, and the upcoming election, there is so much going on. While our communal lives are in chaos, I bet many of your personal lives are full of anxiety, worry, and loss. I know that my own life definitely has been. Additionally, a big part of my summer has been clinical pastoral education, commonly referred to as CPE, at a hospital. I will be honest, CPE is a required part of my journey to become a pastor. It is a journey towards my future hope that is so close to become a pastor. It's so close. <laughs> Yet, this journey of chaplaincy is very difficult. With the COVID pandemic, along with the suffering and death that occur in a hospital, I often feel like I am alone in the wilderness trying to just get through this time to make it, <laughs> to finish this time and reach my goal. With CPE and the pandemic and social injustices continuing, I have had a really hard time seeing God. While reading our passage for today, I began to wonder if this is how Jacob was feeling. Jacob had just left his home, his family, to travel all alone towards his future. He is walking to his uncle's land in order to get married. That is a hopeful future that Jacob is probably rushing towards. During this lonely walk towards his new life, the sun sets and he decides to rest at a certain place. This certain place is unnamed, although the author has given us two location names in the verse before. Jacob is leaving Beersheba and going towards Haran. I myself am wondering why we have these two named places followed by the certain unnamed location. This is not a coincidence. This certain place is important and is indeed going to be named by Jacob in this very passage. Jacob does not choose this place, but
but follows the sign that he has traveled as far as he can for the day, since the sun has come down. Jacob then takes a stone as a pillow and goes to sleep. I'm not sure if this is pointing to how hard-headed and stubborn Jacob will be in later chapters, or simply to how tired he is that a stone as a resting place for his head leads to immediate sleep. In this deep sleep, Jacob sees a ladder on earth that reaches to heaven. A ladder next to him, on the ground, going all the way up to heaven. Not only that, there are angels of God going up and down this ladder. Yes, I am wondering if the angels are climbing up and down the ladder or flying near it, but that is not super important to the message for today. While Jacob is seeing the divine, mystical, beautiful movement between heaven and earth, the Lord stands next to Jacob. This next part is very important. God explains to Jacob who God is. I am the God of your father and grandfather. God goes on to tell Jacob that the land where he is right now, alone in the middle of nowhere, will be given to him and his children. Wait. God is not only providing land for Jacob, who is currently homeless, until he gets to his uncles, and hopefully is let in. But God is also letting Jacob know that he is going to have children. The single man, walking in the wilderness to find a wife, to a hopeful future, is promised land and children. This is survival and flourishing during this time period. But God doesn't stop there. God continues that Jacob's descendants will be immeasurable as the dust of the earth. That Jacob's descendants will be all over the entire earth. Not just Jacob's family will be blessed, but all families of the entire earth will be blessed by Jacob and Jacob's children. This blessing right here is for all of us. Not just Jacob alone in the desert. Not just Jacob's future wives, concubines, 12 sons, and single daughter. All families, all people are blessed through Jacob and his descendants. God finishes this message to Jacob by saying that God is with Jacob. And that God will keep Jacob wherever he goes. God promises to bring him back to this certain place. God swears that God will not leave Jacob until God has accomplished all of these promises. Then Jacob wakes up. This is a dream. How many times have you had a dream that showed you something so beautiful, so hopeful? Have you had a dream in which God has spoken to you? In which God promised to be with you, to keep you, to bless you? I have. I have during these past few months. Yet I have woken up and said, it's just a dream. While we are in such pain, confusion, and fear, it is hard to listen to God's promises and really feel, really trust and believe that they are real, that God will keep these promises. For me, in the midst of 18 deaths, during CPE, for family members of COVID-positive people, for Brianna Taylor's family, 
for those who are oppressed, marginalized, and silenced, for those coming to our country for freedom and being met with violence and hate, for those who have lost their jobs, for those who are trying to uphold the ideals of our nation, for those who have given up on the church. For all of us, it is hard to allow ourselves to let the promises and assurances of God melt our hearts. Our hearts are hard for a reason. We are trying to survive. We are trying to get through the day. That is when God is so very near. Yet I know I often push God away, forget the dream, disregard the promise. Yet Jacob gives us an example of how to respond when God intimately comforts and protects us. Jacob responds with belief. He immediately recognizes God. He shouts, the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. The Lord is in this place and I did not know it. During this time, I am sure that many of us are not seeing God. We might even believe God is definitely not here with all the death, violence, division, and loss. But what if I responded to my dream like Jacob did? What if you and your neighbor and your boss and your childhood best friend all responded to the dreams and whispers of God. The Lord is in this place, and we did not know it. Jacob says in fear, how awesome is this place? As I am writing and recording the sermon on the 4th of July, I am struck by this phrase. Yesterday, my family and I watched Hamilton on Disney+. And watching Lin-Manuel Miranda's interpretation of our founder's history, I feel pride for how awesome this place is. Or at least how awesome it could be. Maybe if we treated our land as the house of God, as Jacob does, by recognizing God, giving of our time and gifts for its betterment, and taking pride in it not one day a year, but every single day, we could feel a fraction of the divine of the Beit El, house of God, and a fraction of the awe that Jacob has in this moment. This passage is just a part of Jacob's story. Yet in this part, there is a lot of foreshadowing of the rest of his life. Jacob and his offspring will be blessed and bless all families. This is the first time I realized that Jacob met God in a dream and also had a son who had the gift of interpreting dreams. It makes sense why Jacob took Joseph so seriously when Joseph started having dreams and interpreting them. Jacob's dream let him know that God is with him, that he will have children who will bless the rest of the earth, and that he will be kept by God. His son Joseph's dream tells Joseph that he will be above his brothers and save them with grain. Yet Joseph's dream was pointing to the fact that after extreme bondage, imprisonment, and servitude, Joseph's gift from God, interpreting dreams, would not only save his family, but all of Egypt. As this passage is just a part of Jacob's life, this 
time is a part of our history. It is a foreshadowing of a lot of change, a lot of freedom, and a lot of hope. But we are still in this wilderness in which we have to keep working, changing, and supporting each other. Yet, we have our dreams from God that show us the promises of our future. Maybe your dream is for just a time as this. Maybe your dream from God will save all of the United States of America, as Joseph saved all of Egypt. What dreams are you having? Are you listening to God when God speaks to you? Do you see God in your midst? What is your gift to God? We are all blessed by this divine encounter that Jacob experienced in a dream in the wilderness. The house of God is everywhere. Where each of us is, God also is. God is with you. God will not leave you. See God, listen to God, and respond to God. For God is in this very place, and we did not know it. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are grateful for this Bethel, this house of encounter with you. We know that you are not confined, but rather you break through to all the different people at altars throughout the whole world. 
We thank you this day for those who have taken action to share your love with us, love through doing and reminding us that we are not alone, but that you are with us even when all we have is fear and a stone for a pillow. Help us to not be fearful and stuck in the routines of our work. Wake us up, O oh God, and give us a new vision, a new vocation, and calling for our lives. Empower us to stop talking and start doing so that the ladder that connects your realm and our world might meet and become one. Thus we pray with Jesus, who taught us, eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Shouting, shouting, hallelujah. hallelujah. 